Hi guys, welcome to Urban History Explores. Today we're filming part two of three of our local histories. So the previous one we've done to this is the history of Gleedless Valley and the next one which you're watching right now is the history of Manor. So enjoy. Manor Castle Wood, which includes the districts of Clearwood, Manor, Manor Park, Park Hill and Wyburn, is one, of, one in the 28 electoral wards in the city of Sheffield. It is located in the eastern part of the city and covers area of 5.4 kilometres squared. The population of this ward in 2001 was 21,000 people in 9,700 households. The population increasing at 21,233 in 2011 makes up the census. It is one of the wards that makes up Sheffield's central constituency. Until the 1930s, the area was mostly rural, with the housing only along the main roads. The estate was started during the 1930s as a garden city type development to alleviate overcrowding in central Sheffield. However, unlike the garden cities, places of work were not included in the scheme, although nearby Darnall and Attercliffe had some industry. Manor is named Sheffield Manor and is now adjacent to Manor Park. Manor Top is served by Sheffield Supertram which also connects to Gleedless Valley. Large areas of the estate were demolished and in some cases rebuilt with private funding from the late 1990s onwards. Sheffield Manor Lodge, also known as Sheffield Manor, or locally as Manor Castle, is a lodge built about 1516 in what then was a large deer park southeast of Sheffield, South Yorkshire, England, to provide country retreat and further accommodate George Talbot, the fourth Earl of Shrewsbury, and his large family. The remnant of this estate is now known as Norfolk Park. The housing estate of Manor is named after Sheffield Manor Lodge. The remains of Sheffield Manor Lodge include parts of the kitchen, long gallery and grade 2 listed turret house, also called Queen Mary's Tower, which contains fine 16th century ceilings. Some evidence points to the turret house being built in 1574 when the Earl of Shrewsbury's accounts records payments of masonry work on the turret at Sheffield Manor. It had three stories of two rooms. The stair at one corner rises above the building onto the roof. This seems to have been designed as a viewing platform is comparable with the hunting tower at Chatsworth House. Mary Queen of Scots was held prisoner by the 6th Earl of Shrewsbury at both Sheffield Manor Lodge and Sheffield Castle. Her ghost is said by some to haunt the turret house building. Wolsey's tower was built to accommodate Cardinal Wolsey, who then died after travelling on to Leicester. Mary came to England in 1568 after her defeat at the Battle of Langside, seeking the support of the Catholic nobility. Mary's freedom was restricted after her cousin Elizabeth was advised of the threat that Mary posed to her own crown. She was handed over to the custody of George Talbot, 6th Earl of Shrewsbury, on 14th February 1569. She was not closely guarded, however, and was able, with help of the Duke of Norfolk and others of Catholic nobility, to plot against Elizabeth. Several times Mary had been moved to places of greater safety and stricter control. On the 28th of November, 1570, she was taken to the Earl of Shrewsbury's castle at Tutbury, where apart from a few breaks at Chatsworth and Buxton, Manor House, she remained for 14 years. Despite Mary's actions, Elizabeth still seemed to support her cousin's claim to the Scottish throne, and Mary wrote regularly to her supporters in Scotland 
asking them to be faithful and await the help she believed Elizabeth would provide. Two of Mary's letters are now preserved in the Sheffield archives. The Duke of Norfolk, not long released from the Tower of London, was caught in collusion with the papal agent Roberto di Ridolfo, plotting to bring about the Catholic uprising in England. Parliament demanded the execution of both Mary Stuart and Norfolk. At this stage, no action was taken against Mary, but the Duke of Norfolk was beheaded in 1572. Mary sat for a portrait painter at Sheffield in August 1577. In 1852, Mary was still being held at the inventory of all the household goods and furniture belonging to the George, Earl of Shrewsbury, was made. The inventory describes the castle and contents, giving an idea of the types of the rooms in the castle. These include a chapel, a porch going into the great hall from the great chamber, which was probably the large dining room, a wardrobe, the lord's chamber, an outer chamber, the ladies chamber, a bake house, a brew house, pantry, wash house and low wash house, a round tower, a square tower and a turret round the towers on either side of the great gatehouse and walls running along the waterside, a porter's lodge, a dungeon, square room, a little kitchen, old kitchen, a kennel and a large range of stables. Also included in the inventory is the stuff of the Queen of Scots and her people. Mary had with her a large entourage which varied over time made up of Scotch, French and English friends and servants. The 1582 survey also lists the furnishings in the hall at the Ponders, also known as the Old Queen's Head. And Mary died in 1587 and she was beheaded.